I'd like to ask Miss America 2012, Laura Kepler, to come and join me at the podium. I'm so sorry that my daughter isn't here. She really wanted to do this. <laughs> She's homesick. Um, you know, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child says that every child has the right to grow up in a family. Of course, the United States and Somalia haven't signed the UN Convention, but still, my daughter and you were very fortunate that your father's incarceration interrupted your family, but didn't end it. It, for my family, about at least 40 people in this room helped me raise my daughter and son, and I know that your family's been really supportive of you. When, for the entire time that my daughter would speak about having a parent in prison, she always started by saying, I share with the permission of my family. And I know that your choice to share this intimate experience on a public stage, on a national stage, at a time when it still carries stigma and shame, was made with the permission of your family. And this award is really for your entire family, not just for you. I'm sure that with your beauty and talent, you could have become Miss America on a platform of saving endangered baby seals. <laughs> but you chose our babies, and it will make a bigger difference. This is the Thomas Mott Osborne Spirit Medal, and it recognizes courage, it recognizes standing for and standing up for the rights of children to have a lifelong relationship with their parents and not to be judged, blamed, or labeled because of their parents' incarceration. Wear it well. Well, thank you so much. It's truly an honor to be here and to receive um, this wonderful medal and award. If I could, before I begin, can I have all the children who are here who have a parent in prison, can you just stand and can we just give them a round of applause for their courage? And They are really the reason that I am here and they are really the kids that I speak for on a daily basis. But. I as was mentioned, I'd like to just briefly tell you why this is so important to me, and it's because I am the daughter of a formerly incarcerated father. When I was 14, my father was charged with a white-collar crime, and then when I was 17, he was sentenced to 18 months in federal prison. Of those 18, he served 12, and uh, then spent six months in a halfway home following that. But for me, the challenges of many things, but specifically the challenges of high school, were those of uncertainty and fear and anxiety and isolation and shame, which I know is the same for many of the children that are here today and the millions of children across our country who experience this. But as I entered the Miss America pageant, which is a long story, but I, know I only have a brief amount of time, but as I entered this um, organization, I really viewed it as a way to raise a loud awareness for these children and to speak about them on a national level. But like was mentioned, it was, it was not something that I chose on my own. It was a decision that I had to make with my family and one specifically with my father because this was something that we had closed five years prior to this. And so I knew this would come to the forefront of my story and it would reopen and rehash those wounds. And so now I travel more than 20,000 miles each month, um, which is quite a few. And, and for those of you who wonder, I am ca calculating and accumulating my own frequent flyer miles, <laughs> which I am happy about. Um, but I, I, have, I have visited countless organizations. I have been the spokesperson for numerous of them. I speak primarily on my platform. I'm also the National Goodwill Ambassador for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. I do a lot of work with the USO and our corporate sponsors. But I can truly say I have not seen an organization that is as effective as the Osborne Association, serving more than 7,000 people each year across one state. 
Last night, I had the opportunity to share a meal with a few of the Osborne board members, and Tanya Krupat, who is just so lovely and welcoming me at the airport and, and spending the evening with me. Um, and she is the director of the New York Initiative for Children of Incarcerated Parents. And I was inspired by her moving description of Osborne's accomplishments. And then to sit here today and see some of them come to life was just truly incredible. Osborne has a family-focused approach, which is unique. Oftentimes, I have visited organizations that, that are specific to the children, to mentoring them, to foster, foster care programs, but this is one that encompasses the family. And Donovan and his mother, Ayana, exemplified this work, and thank you for sharing your incredible testimony. Programs like Family Ties bring children to visit their fathers and mothers in prisons across the state, even escorting them on two day trips hundreds of miles from New York City. Teen College Dreams inspires and prepares children like Donovan to attend college, and Family Works enables incarcerated fathers to make, mend, and maintain relationships with their children through a comprehensive fatherhood program. Osborne's advocacy for children does not seek to embarrass government, but to work collaboratively as partners. Recently, the state of New York established the Coordinating Council on Children with Incarcerated Parents, co-chaired by Osborne, to advocate for the needs of these often forgotten children. While this is my first visit to Osborne, I, I know and hope it will not be my last. As John said so movingly a moment ago, we must serve as champions for freedom. If not for us, who will stand for these daughters and sons to ensure their mothers and fathers remain in their lives? Let us keep a commitment to these families and support Osborne's transformative work. Let us be Osborne's champion and let us be Osborne's champions for freedom. Thank you.